I think I always knew that I wanted top surgery. Like, I never not knew I didn't want it. That was never like, as soon as I realized that you could have it, I, I knew I wanted it. That was even before that I was sure that I was, that I identified as trans male. I knew that titties were not for me. <laughs> like, from the time when it just started popping up, I was, I was already too thrilled. Already too thrilled. I was not gonna miss these things at all. So. Elaborate about the top dysphoria. I don't know, when I was like maybe 11 years old in like elementary school, I forgot to wear a bra one day. And like one of my friends was like, do you don't have on a bra, you know you have to wear a bra. Like that made me know like, Everybody, not only is, cause I'm the the king of compartmentalization. Yes, you are. So it's like I could compartmentalize. That's how that was. That's my survival tactic. Mm. But it's like kind of being like a slap in the face. Like you can sit up here and try to forget that this exists. Right. But the rest of the world is not. Right. They see it. Yeah. So that's that's what my dysphoria felt like. Like. No matter what I did, it was just there. Like, cause even binding, like yeah, because I'm a big guy, and some mm -hmm. guys got big, bigger chest than other, mm -hmm. than certain people didn't notice. But even passing, it made, it's the times I didn't pass, I'm sure it was because of my top. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like 99% sure the times that I didn't pass, it was like, and I always had a hard time finding binders that fit properly. Either too big or too loose or too tight and uncomfortable. And I was like, this was a long time coming. Yeah. Um, how did it feel looking in a, in a mirror? A lot of times I just wouldn't look. Like, it's just like recently when I, when I, like know that top surgery is coming closer and closer and closer mm -hmm. that I actually looked in the mirror and like really surveyed what was going on and how I looked so you've never really looked at your body as a whole no not really like I would compartmentalize a lot that's very interesting yeah so yeah I never really looked until like I would say the last two months when I started doing the started strength and I started getting a more masculine looking upper body yeah as a whole it made me it made it easier for me to look and see exactly what was going on and the fact that I know that top surgery was on the horizon okay. made it easier to look and be like it will not it won't be like this forever Wow. Like, even with the COVID thing, I was like, man, I, please don't let me get the COVID and die with breast. Oh, wow. Really? That was a thought. Wow. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's deep. That's very deep. Um, so, how did you get the ball rolling as far as the surgery? Well, I kept, like, a part of me kept kind of putting it off. It, it was like I was playing this game with myself mm -hmm. about being worthy to get top surgery. Yes. Mm -hmm. And having to be a certain size, <laughs> a certain yeah. look. Mm -hmm. So, for, uh, like, well, for me, my insurance, you have to be on T a year. For my insurance mm. in particular, all insurance is not like that. But for my insurance in particular, you have to be on hormone therapy for a year. Right. To so I, that was all automatically the year. You know what I'm right. Saying? So, but this whole time I was been playing this game with myself. I've been on um, HRT for two uh, two years and a couple of months. Right. So, like after the year, I you would think I would have got the ball rolling right then as soon as my year was up or mm -hmm. coming up on my year mm -hmm. you know because that's what I should have been doing like mm -hmm. as soon as my 10 month hit I should have been putting the things in place to do it mm -hmm. but you know I played this game with myself which I'm try to avoid doing that in the future yes of being worthy like I'm worthy at any size I'm worthy at any look or whatever to get what absolutely I need right so once I finally start doing that, 
I was like, I just saw, I last looked for a surgeon that took my insurance and mm -hmm. sought an appointment for a consultation. Mm -hmm. And that was the first one I went to, the nice enough uh, surgeon or whatever. But the problem w with him was, is it's something about the way he was explaining what he was going to do. And between that and the fact that he didn't have any pictures, mm -hmm. and he, it made me just look elsewhere. Yeah, you had no way of seeing his and results. And as a matter of fact, he did. He had one picture on his website. One picture. Just of, one? Yeah, what looked like an adolescent trans male who was, wasn't big and probably didn't have bigger top to begin with oh, okay so yeah that wasn't not gonna do nothing for me <laughs> right know? yeah so that made me continue to look and I saw I talked to some other trans men of that were bigger like me and they were mm -hmm. like saying but their um one one of their their surgeons was in Texas and the other one was in Atlanta and only took <clears throat> a certain insurance which I could have got that insurance through my job because it switches back and forth if you wanted to switch from Primera to um, Kaiser you mm -hmm. can do that and his doctor was with Kaiser mm -hmm. but it was already all the way in Atlanta so I would have had to wait a year mm -hmm. wait till the end of the year switch and then start over I, and I didn't want to do all that but luckily I found a top surgeon that I had actually heard of before that that did top surgery on bigger patients mm -hmm. and um, I looked through his stuff, I looked through his website, he had pictures on his website of trans men of all size mm -hmm. and his results and I thought they are pretty good. Even though he was four to five hours away, um, mm -hmm. I thought it would, it would be worth it. So I set a second consultation with him and to get the consultation with him you had to have your well, your your year at HRT, which I already had, because mm -hmm. it was like a, a, it had been like a year and six months at this point when I set the appointment, mm -hmm. and you had to have a, your, cause your letter from a, from a, 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 a what a social worker, what do you call it? Uh, psychiatrist. Psychiatrist, yeah. You have to have your psych letter. Mm -hmm. Those two things to even get a consultation with him, uh, and. A letter from your your primary physician or your mm -hmm. HRT doctor. So I had all those things and I saw that it was actually on my birthday of last year, mm -hmm. November 25th. And you know, I was pretty excited. You know, I was at the time I think that it would happen faster than this, which is we're all the way what June. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been eight months. Because out. he was saying that it only takes a couple of months once you get approved for me to mm -hmm. get a date. So I was left that appointment pretty excited. So, um, you want to talk about the type of pre-existing conditions that you had, that but still made you not that it didn't keep you from getting the surgery. It's just oh, some well, things yeah. that you had to deal with. I mean, because that's that was another thing of me wanting to say that oh well, yeah, I should just lose this amount of weight and I should be good because I had pre-existing conditions, which is. A high BMI, a BMI was at the time, like maybe 47. It's, yeah. I've gotten it down to like 41, but still. Yeah. Um, I have sleep apnea and I have high blood pressure. And all things that will be solved if I lose 60 or 70 pounds. Right. So there's always things that's in the back of my head that, you know, I need to lose this weight because of health reasons. You know, when right. people say health reasons, I actually have health reasons to be losing this weight or whatever. And now it's basically the only reasons for health reasons because mm -hmm. because yeah. it didn't hold you back from surgery. Yeah, it didn't hold me back from anything else. I mean, it, you know, a lot of doctors um, because there's a lot of good doctors in the city of Seattle or whatever. Some doctors won't even touch you if you're a certain weight. So, yeah, and uh, they'll tell you, oh, you have to lose weight or you have to, to get to this this amount or this amount or that amount. Yeah. So. I felt lucky to get with the, the doctor that, you know, was just focused on giving me what I wanted, like. Mm -hmm. And making you happy. <coughs> giving you a better quality of life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I want to ask you about the informal consent and who you can get it from and um, 
How many appointments do you have to go to to get that? Oh, you stop it. Okay. I wanted to ask you about the um, the informed consent. Yeah, the, a lot of people already know you can do informed consent with uh, HRT, but mm -hmm. you could also do inf informed consent with your top surgeon. If, mm -hmm. Even if your top surgeon doesn't do inf informed consent, there they are therapists that do informed consent. That means you tell them, yeah, I want this, and they, you know, on the first, <clears throat> you only have to see them one time. That's the first time, mm -hmm. and they're gonna write that letter for you because they feel like you have been informed. You, you know what I'm saying, you mm -hmm. Which, which is great because a lot of people have limitations on. I can't think that they have to go to a psychiatrist six or seven times, mm -hmm. missing work, or you know what I'm saying, just you know, pay, and paying out of pocket. Sometimes mm -hmm. even if you don't have to pay out of pocket, that co-pay adds up too. You know, it, right. it's your time too. Like, do you have an hour, you know, to talk about something that? You already made up in your mind that you want, right? So it's basically you're wasting your time, mm. you're wasting your money, you're wasting time, you mm -hmm. know. So yeah, the informed consent for your therapist, that's a thing. So you, if there's something that's holding you back, look for them. They're all over. A lot of times they can Skype, so it doesn't matter where you are, mm -hmm. and they'll write that letter for you. Mm -hmm. Um, I also wanted to ask you, um. You talked about the specific reasons why you didn't pick that first doctor in Seattle. Why did you specifically pick Dr. Stellar? Um, I I specifically picked him because I I can't think of it was another doctor that he used to uh, kind of like practice with, mm -hmm. and they were kind of a big deal with working on people from when before Seattle got a lot of good top surgeons. Mm -hmm. They would people would drive out to Idaho, cause that's what it was before in Idaho, mm -hmm. to get surgery from him and his his partner or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, he had a like I said a lot of pictures of bigger trans men, mm -hmm. and where he did the surgery, so you can like see it, you know. The result. Yeah, you can see the results, which that's tangible, mm -hmm. cause I don't know what to expect, cause everybody's body's pretty much different. But if you only have thin people, right then I really can't, can't yeah, gauge what the results would I be mean, on a big person. And yeah, like, if I didn't have any other choices, mm -hmm. yeah, whatever. Right. But if if you have choices, don't settle. Like, mm -hmm. look around. Because if, if I had to take a plane to Texas or take a plane to Atlanta and switch my, you mm -hmm. know, and switch my insurance around, don't settle. This is your body. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't settle. You deserve to be happy. Yeah. So, I mean, you're trying to do the least, least harm possible. Least, mm -hmm. So at least do a lot of research and see pictures. Like, if they can't cater to having a bigger body, and they like showing that ha their work on bigger bodies, mm -hmm. they, they probably shouldn't be working on you. Yeah, that's like, absolutely because correct. They don't probably don't respect your body in the first place. Like, right to even show like look I work on people who are bigger not just working on them and taking their money mm -hmm. but actually showcasing like look you know right this yeah. is something about how you're gonna look or if, if they got nothing to show you and you're just going by faith you know yeah I, I don't know if I would do that and I, like there's like I said there's a couple good top surgeons that's you know and you might have to travel and it's gonna cost money and that's you know accessibility issues yeah with it, but especially these days with COVID and everything yeah yeah but, there's mean, ways around it there's ways around it your body sometimes you, you would have to be a little patient too mm -hmm. on top of it you know yeah don't just throw yourself into a wood chipper just because you're just being because impatient you're being impatient man. try to try to do you know be speedy but do what's best for you and your body and what makes you feel more comfortable because it's already kind of like a, a, a choice where it's going to be a lot of anxiety attached to it for, right. you know, for certain reasons and if not others you know mm -hmm. yeah so then once you chose Dr. Stellar and you went to the consultations and you had all the paperwork and everything um, talk about getting the date and taking off work and those sorts of things Oh, okay, well, once 
I finally got my date because my consultation was on November 25th. I'm thinking January, I'll be on the table. Oh, here it is, January. I'm still calling, like, hey, what's going on? I'm calling my insurance company, like, what's going on, man? Like, what's it's like I would have to call them every month to act like, and they would, they would be like, oh, you got denied, and this, that, and the third. They'd give me this whole song and dance about, and they couldn't really tell me. It said something about organic or I don't know it was a big song in there but eventually I would say was that April 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 May. like I called it and I was like emailing them and I was like because I had just got off the phone with the insurance and they had told me I got denied again so then I like uh, emailed Dr. Stella's office and be like they said that they need you to resend something and um she emailed me back. She's like, no, you're approved. What, you what date do you want? And she gave me a list of dates. <laughs> and I picked one. <laughs> like the closest one. Like, they were like, two in June, two in July, and two in August. Yeah. I, I mean, because they had just started opening things back up with the COVID. And mm -hmm. I knew for a fact that they were going to start closing things back down. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, let me get the closest absolute date which put me in a pinch when it comes to like my job and stuff like that mm -hmm. but <coughs> that's, that's the date I picked I picked July 7th and it came up really fast like a lot faster than I thought it would mm -hmm. um, I tried to get my paperwork early like an order early but for my job not early enough and then but for my union really early so that's the only one i've turned in so far so i still waiting on my job paperwork to turn in for well also to you you have to have the doctor's signature and, for yeah that, so in my state um for fmla because this state helps you with the fmla paying for while you're while you're, while you're out so but yeah i was so excited so excited but pessimistic at the same time so it's like it's like I was going along not trying to get too excited not trying to get too high so I did kept on pushing things off and it put, I kept pushing it off and it still kept getting closer and closer, mm -hmm. and closer so yeah so the night of the drive to Spokane you want to talk about that the drive to Spokane I was so sleepy but like a lot of people, I, I was like reading up, and a lot of people were like, "Oh, I couldn't sleep. I was so excited. I could sleep, but I didn't sleep because my wife was driving. <laughs> bless her, driving the whole way, and I didn't want to leave her, leave her up by so herself. So sweet. So I forced myself to stay awake. I was losing the battle sometimes, but for the most part, I was able to stay up. And um, pre-op, you want to talk about that? Pre-op was like surreal. Like I still kind of didn't believe it was happening. Mm -hmm. And you know, like I say, until the lady shot me with the blood thinner. Yeah. <laughs> that's when I'm like, oh shit, this is really happening. So that still, I got a little uh, anxiety then, like just a little rush of anxiety, like with the what ifs and everything. That, mm -hmm. You know, gave the old girl a call or whatever, and text all my, the family members that I loved and tell them I love them and all mm -hmm. that type of stuff. And the conversations that we had in pre-op, I'm really appreciative that they let you come back there with me because that's another thing I've been hearing. Like in the COVID, a lot of people, yes, a lot of they won't let their the people come back with them. They yeah, just make them wait outside. But you were able to come back with me, and I really appreciate that that comfort having you there. Yeah, it was comforting for me to just be able to see you off and not have to, you know be unknown in that part so what was the name of the surgery that you got what what all did you have done i had a double mastectomy which is you know the cut across mm -hmm. and with liposuction which is probably why i'm in so much like discomfort right absolutely because that you know liposuction can be actually pretty violent um do you want to talk about post-op um like your first night's sleep well your med coming was... out was like a bitch like when i first woke up the pain was pretty great 
and like I said, I felt like a hot poker, like a line was sot right here. And then somebody put 90 pounds on top of it to make sure the hot poker didn't go around. <laughs> and I'm trying to breathe through it, and like, I could feel myself like trying to wake up and take deep breaths or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of weird. It was kind of, it was kind of a struggle. It was definitely a struggle. That was probably one of the hardest parts about it was the waking up. Yeah? Yeah. Because I, the pain was really great at that time. It has not been nowhere near since. Mm -hmm. And the breathing was really like coming out of the anesthesia. It was really hard. It was really hard. Well, I'm glad you made it through that part. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Your first night's sleep. Uh, uncomfortable. I'm a side to back, a side to stomach sleeper. Mm -hmm. And sleeping on my back for these past days has been for the birds. I don't like it. <laughs> and you don't like it either. Cause I, I don't. Snore I do not like it. Like a bear cat when I sleep <laughs> on my back. Well, you know, I'm. Tr you know, I'm understanding. So, but yeah, yeah, I do. I do not like it. Um. How do you feel about having to take, uh, for the last, what has it been, almost six days now, you've had to take medicine and your tubes have had to be drained. You've had to take medicine every three hours and your tubes have had to be drained every eight hours. How's that? I mean, it's very tedious. It's very tedious. The medicine that they give you, they give you antibiotic, they give you anti-inflammatory, they give you um, a minor pain medicine and then they give you a major pain medicine. So it's a lot of pills. Mm -hmm. I'm not that big on pill taking. We, nope. My wife been on top of me every three hours to make mm -hmm. sure I didn't take them though. You know, I haven't really experienced any pain. I probably only take one of the major pain pills maybe once a day now, even though it's supposed to be taken three or four times. Yeah, you slowed down a lot. So on that the one. pain, it's not the pain that's getting me, it's the discomfort of having the binder on still, and having the drains in, and can't sleep really well being allergic to the bandages underneath the binder yeah the bandages give me terrible blood blisters and yeah yeah it's pretty bad yeah so it's been very uncomfortable that part has been uncomfortable you want to talk about midweek how you felt um midweek i felt like i was better i felt like i could do things and all that type of stuff walking around mm -hmm. a bit and now I'm walking around even more you're able so, to eat solid foods day two yeah I mean, if somebody's gonna try to do this on their own, they're definitely gonna need somebody for the first two days. Like, that's... Yeah, I don't see how anybody can do this on their own. Yeah, they definitely gonna need somebody for the first two days. Well, the days after that, you probably could tough it out, but I wouldn't recommend it. Oh, man. <laughs> but you probably could tough it out, but yeah, you definitely... You'll be miserable doing this shit by top yourself. Top list of things you need, somebody to care for you. <laughs> I, I <coughs> don't disagree with that sentiment. Now we're at the end of the week, and tomorrow you, well, we are going to speak it into existence that tomorrow you are getting your drains removed. Tomorrow the drains are coming out. So, how do you feel? In six days. Six tomorrow days. will be six days, yeah. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see my new chest. I, I kind of have a feeling of how it's going to look, but you know, you never know until you actually see it. Right. So... I've been dealing with this binder, it's been itching, itching, and a lot of swelling and a lot of pressure. Yes. But to even, to just see, see it, mm -hmm. you know, to see that it's really gone and, and, and all that type of stuff, I can't wait. Very excited. How do you like living in the hotel? I hate it. <laughs> I hate living in the hotel. I'm so ready to go home. I'm so ready to go home. Like, and I don't see myself waiting six weeks to work out. I'm gonna have to do it. Uh-uh, come on now. I'm gonna have to do something. Okay, well, you know, walking I think will be perfectly fine, you know. Walking? But, yeah. All right, I'm gonna try with just the walking. Yeah, I think a little bit of cardio would be okay, but any like weightlifting and stuff like you normally do? No. No. I feel like I can squat right now. I suggest <laughs> that you don't because I can't pick you up. 
put 300 on pounds on the back. Let's let's now. let's not. Okay, let's not and say we did. We know that you can do it. That's that's okay. So we know that you're excited about your new chest. Well, I know you're excited about seeing your new chest. But um, what tips do you have other than a caretaker, of course? Um, bendy straws. <laughs> Lifesavers. Bendy straws. You're gonna need some bendy straws. You're gonna need a neck pillow. Yep. You know, be sitting up. It's gonna save your neck a lot. Yep. You're gonna need a button-up shirt. Absolutely. A short sleeve button-up shirt. Yes, the hard sleeve one. Those long sleeve ones are hard to put on. Yeah, the, the long sleeve ones are harder to put on. So, if you ain't got those things, you might want to invest. In chapstick. In chapstick, because your lips are gonna be feeling real crusty. <laughs> It sucks, but yeah, I don't be stuck with the crusty lips. <laughs> yeah, that would be difficult. I think that's it. It is. Is there anything else you want to talk about? No, I think that's that is it. I mean, I guess I can show you how this binder looks. Looks like I've been through a war, blood everywhere. Yeah, it looks pretty terrible. Oh, being able to take a shower, I can't wait to be able to take a shower. At least you got you got some sort of bath. So you have the, the binder here. Let me stand up. Have the binder here. You got the Jackson Pratt. And these got to be drained every three hours. Pretty gnarly. They're pretty empty right now though. But hopefully, I'll be getting these taken out. Yeah, we're at the end, oh, so empty end. empty drains is what you're looking for. And hopefully we we'll get them taken out tomorrow. And I can put an after at the end of this video. Mm-hmm. And that's it. See you later, YouTube. <laughs> Whatever. So, you see... The side going on right here. Might as well just show you the back. So hopefully I get the results that I'm desired. Small difference. Oh my god. Just a little different. Ow. Ow. Oh god. Alright. Now, we had talked a little bit about the nipples. You are gonna be so fucking happy. And the fact that we wanted to so. burn, I actually was able what we talked about before surgery, uh -huh. I think we're going to be perfect. You're going to be so happy. Um, these are tears of joy. I am, <laughs> I am happy for you. Wow, an incredible difference. You okay, honey? A little yeah, bit of pain. That's a good blood blister you got there. Yeah, and there's a couple on his back. Okay. For those blood blisters, right put, yeah. put a little uh, antibiotic ointment on them and then cover them with a band aid. Okay. And they'll heal up just fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oops, sorry.
drains to come out. Perfect. I can dream it better in my head. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so we're gonna put dressings back on the nipple. Okay. Okay. These dressings we put on the nipple, I want you to keep on for five days. Five days? You can shower with them on. Okay. So today you can take a shower. Oh, great. Okay. This one, the ones I put over the drain sites, you can take them off in the shower. Okay. And then if they're draining, put something back on. If not, they're fine. 